Joined now by Vicki McKenna for Culture Cast. Vicki, good to see you. Great to see you. In the few weeks we've been taking a hiatus here while I was teaching my university course, things get pretty crazy, don't they, very fast. We've got a New York City-based psychiatrist, somebody who is theoretically supposed to have empathy and work with therapy with people, who has also been in her, in her long career. She's also been uh, a teacher and a professor. Her name is K Dr. Aruna Kilanani. Kill Anani, which is an interesting title for her last name, because she basically has come out and said that she would very gratefully and without any remorse like to put five bullets into the head of any white person who comes near her. Yeah, and I'm not sure if she's got a clinical practice, um, but as a psychiatrist, I imagine that she has treated people. I do believe that she's got some advertisements suggesting that she does, in fact, see patients. Patients! So here is a woman who, quite honestly, um, one might be tempted to describe as psychopathic, who is saying that she is so enraged that the thing that would make her happiest is to take a, a revolver and put five shots into the head of white people and then happily, with a bounce in her step, quote, bounce in her step, wash the blood off and go about her day. And this is now um, acceptable discourse in academia. This is, um, this is elite intellectualism um, so you've now seen psych psychopathic behavior redefined as high-minded intellectualism in the name of anti-racism and equity. It's unbelievable how little pushback there is when you hear uh, comments like this or you hear themes like this. Duke, there's another story we're going to talk about a bit later. There's, there's virtually no pushback on this whatsoever. And it's becoming more and more common as the weeks and months go by. It is. And there, where's Twitter? No, uh, no evidence that Twitter or Facebook is suspending this woman. Uh, you know, it, it, and we've seen that double standard all through the Israeli attack sure. by Hamas. Right. Uh, what the Isra whatever the Israelis do is war crimes to defend Israel is to get banned. But uh, the idea that you're lobbing rockets indiscriminate Iranian rockets indiscriminately into Jerusalem, targeting local neighborhoods and family areas, that's perfectly a legitimate war aim if you're Hamas, and no one's said anything about that. You know, we really probably should have paid attention to the way the left um, discerned the Israeli problem, shouldn't we? Because as they, you know, cheered on indiscriminate attacks against Israeli civilians, and as they condemned always at the United Nation in the form of resolutions or just general rhetoric, um, we saw how easily dehumanized they had made Israeli citizens. They have turned them into less than human creatures. And so um, any kind of attack, any kind of, of mayhem delivered to the Israelis is perfectly acceptable. Well, congratulations, America, because the left has now used that model that I, I don't know if it's a psych psychological model, a political model. It certainly is a philosophical and ideological model to, to now identify all of their enemies here in the United States, white people, as not worthy of even basic human rights. And if we're not worthy of basic human rights, that's because we're not, we don't rise to the level of basic humans in the minds of the left. This is terrifying. People are going to get killed, period. And nobody seems to want to raise the alarm. I really like what you said about the UN. I don't know if you're aware of this, but just last week in the wake of the Hamas bombing, the UN decided to put Israel on perpetual protest watch, right? So in other words, rather than just holding new meetings every time something happens to condemn Israel, now the UN organization has Israel on permanent censure. How about that? Yeah, so we, we don't that's even have because to they're not human. That's they right, They don't have exactly. rights. They have no, they are, there's no argument, there's no legitimate, uh, you know, rationale that they could, including uh, having their enemies bomb, uh, you know, schools and uh, in, sm in, in communities and neighborhoods that have nothing to do with any kind of conflict. Yeah, so now that's, that's America, Duke, um, where the entire left has put white people and capitalism and the constitution and the rule of law and civil liberties and human rights and God himself on perpetual censure. You know, Kilanani, our psychiatrist, she also gave a talk. She was a university professor for a while, and her talk was entitled The Psychopathic Problem of the White Mind. Here is a woman who is uttering psychopathic ideas, and she seems to have no irony. irony. There's no sense of <laughs> irony. Yeah, there's no sense of, of hyperbole here. She's telling you exactly what she would like to do, and yet she is teaching people about the psychopathic problem of so the white mind. 
So when someone decides to take her literally, so she could maybe pass this off and say, I was just using hyperbole. I don't think so, but she might be able to say, I was just kidding. You know, it was perhaps it was a poor choice of words, an artful expression. What happens when someone takes her literally? What happens when someone says, my professor said that the one thing that is, you know, righteous and just is to take a revolver and put five shots in some white person's random white person, mind you, because she hates all white people. She has now categorized everybody who is white as, as something less than human and something that is uh, to be dismissed, you know, in an, in, as animals. So what happens when someone decides to take her up on her advice and just randomly shoots white people? Oh, wait, dude, we've actually already had instances of that going on. We've had instances of that going on with white people and with Asian people. And yet the left seems to you know, continually double down on this lie that the single greatest threat to the United States and the entire planet after capitalism is white supremacy that doesn't seem to exist in any way that rational people could define. After the break, we're going to have a couple of examples of just that, and we'll see how the media is handling them. Back again with Vicki McKenna for our Culture Cast segment. Vicki, you made a great point at the end of the uh, first segment here, and I don't understand this. When you think about violence, who is it that's knocking out a little Asian women on the streets of New York and California? Who is going up to Asian men and women, oftentimes senior citizens, knocking them stone cold out? This is a, a huge African-American problem. I have not seen a single one of these assaults on Asian people that was not perpetrated by a black person. And, and, and talk about the psychopathic mind. We, we can't even acknowledge this kind of black violence because I'm sure the Kalanis of the world would say that's because white people are so bad, black people somehow have to punch out Asians. But you look around at the broad. <laughs> yeah, broad, that, that it, makes a lot of sense. It makes yeah. a lot of sense, right? So it's our fault. And there are Asian activists, critical race teacher Asians, who are saying just that. These attacks on black pe by black people on Asians are actually the fault of white people. Well, here's an example. We have a Hispanic driver for Amazon. And you will not believe this video if you're watching this from home. She shows up. She was late. The video is late. Here she is. And so the, the, the white woman made a comment. And look at that, Vicky. That's that's your that, that's how you you uh, make amends. You 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 know, seek absolution for your white supremacy right there. You let an Amazon a Hispanic Amazon woman beat the ever loving blank out of you. Oh, wait, Duke, it gets better. Then invite her into your home to deliver your packages. I mean, talk about Stockholm syndrome. I mean, this woman is beaten viciously and yet is, is not defending herself and continues to allow this woman to jaw at her. Look at that. Wow and taunt her and then is invited in to deliver the package. It's a staggering moment, right? I mean, and uh, luckily this was caught on camera. So how is this not directly transferable to what our psychiatrist Kilanani said? I mean, because she you said, know, she said, do it. She said, do as, it. She you said, know as well as I do. violence. You know, as well as I do that if, if there was somebody, if you had a white person and a white psychiatrist saying he just wanted to kill, put five bullets in the head of a black man, he would be thrown out of his practice. He would have been uninvited to speak at the university again. He would lose his doctor's He'd license. be charged with a crime. Exactly. You'd see him charged with a crime. So what's, yeah, what's, going, what's going on here, Vicky? Why is well, this, this is, kind this of is overt stuff? This is critical race theory manifest, folks. That's what you are seeing, is critical race theory manifest. When you have so many people who do not object to obviously psychotic you know, uh, declarations of transparent totalitarianism, you have... But you, you now see all of the indoctrination, all of the propagandizing accomplishing its mission. And that is to convince an entire group of people that they don't have anything to say, that they have no rights, that they're not permitted to defend themselves. That's what you're seeing is the that is the culmination of critical race theory right there, especially when she says, oh, I'm sorry and looks to make amends to get her packages pulled in. That's what American educational institutions want white people to think. They want them to think that they somehow deserve to be beaten, to be treated like second class citizens, to be dismissed, to be reviled, to be dehumanized. That's the point of the last 30 years of education. And that is the actual explicit point of the last five. Here's what our psychiatrist Aruna Kilanani says, talking about when she hears white people 
talking about race. This is her response. She says, we are calm, we are giving, too giving, and then we get angry. They use our responses as confirmation that we're crazy or have emotional problems, Kilanani says. It always ends that way, happens every time. Nothing makes me angrier than when a white person tells me not to be angry because they haven't seen real anger yet. I wonder what Miss Kalani would say about the video of the Amazon driver. I'm pretty sure she would say, no, 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 that's not even the beginning of the a kind of violence we right. are condoning. Because how dare that white lady uh, say you're late? How dare she be critical of a POC Amazon delivery driver? How dare she? But with her white supremacy and her white privilege, this is this is bananas. And look at Dr. Kilanani. Dr. Kilanani, who taught at where? Yale, has a psychiatry degree, actually is somebody who lives a life of privilege. This is someone who somehow has found a way to be angry about all of the incredible things that this nation has offered her as, as opportunity to uh, have a career, to be a person of influence. And she would say that that, that that woman who's just standing there out in front of her apartment complex getting an Amazon delivery, she's the one that has something to apologize for. She's the bad person. So everything, and you know this, you've seen this at, with attacks in Chicago and in Los Angeles, when you have people of color attacking other people, it is justified as a protest against oppression. So that's where we are, Duke, that crime is a protest against oppression, how Soviet, that crime is a protest against oppression and the victims of violence and the victims of this crime had it coming. <laughs>